Hello again everyone, let's get started reading the new book for this half term called Planet Omar, Accidental Trouble Magnet by Zainib Mayan. So let's get started. So there's some lovely illustrations at the to begin with giving you a little introduction to the characters of the book. So, me. My name is Omar. This is my face. I have a huge imagination. I hate marshmallows. I once raced against my dad's car on my bike and won. Ezra, don't be fooled by this three-year-old's innocent face. Can scream and cry louder than an ambulance siren. Bits of food can always be found in his hair. He plays with my stuff and makes it all sticky. I love him, but don't tell anyone. Mariam, 13, but thinks she's 16. Knows 28 surahs of the Quran by heart. Was once caught hiding a stash of fondant fantasies under her pillow. Loves to wind me up even more than she loves fondant fantasies. Mum doesn't know how to say no. A scientist, hardly ever seen without a cup of coffee in her hands. This is what she looks like without her hijab on. When there are no men around, he would be allowed to marry her if she didn't already have my dad. Dad has a beard because he's copying the greatest man who ever lived. I've never actually seen his face without it. We'll never eat a beetroot. Also a scientist? Not too much hair left. He says it's because of his genes. Rides a motorbike. Grandma tries to puncture the wheels because she doesn't think it's safe. Chapter 1 There was a big puddle of spit on my little brother's forehead. It was mine, but phew, he was still sleeping. Let me tell you what happened. I'd been in my bed attempting to have a good night's sleep when suddenly I was being chased through the playground by a teacher who had green slime oozing out of his ears and slugs for fingernails. It was a dream, a bad dream of course. When I woke up I was extremely and very happy that I wasn't about to be a monster's dinner. I breathed slowly to get my heartbeat back to normal, instead of like it was on a trampoline. I remembered that my mum told me to spit towards my shoulder three times if I have a nightmare. That's supposed to get re rid of Shaitan, who is the ugly head who causes bad dreams. I really wanted to get rid of Shaitan, so I conjured up a bucket full of spit in my mouth, shot it out over my left shoulder. That'll teach him. I just hoped it would be dry before morning so nob nobody would know I'd spout my little brother by accident. I put my head back on the pillow for an eighth of a second, but then I heard a really loud and really annoying sound. <coughs> See? Very loud and very annoying. It was Ezra. I guessed he noticed the spitball after all and wasn't impressed. Mum appeared at the door to our room in her pyjamas, looking all bleary-eyed. Unimpressed parent can be recognised by hand on hip and furrowed eyebrows. Can be scary, but do not run away. She said, What's the matter, Ezra? Ezra was still busy wailing, so I said, Spitball. Not again, Omar. Wah! I covered my head with the pillow. Then Dad came in saying that it would be nice if we could all have at least one night in the week where poor Ezra isn't woken up by my shenanigans. I asked him what 
what that means for the billionth time. He rolled his eyes for the billionth time. I heard my big sister, Marianne, growling in her room. She definitely doesn't like mornings very much. Mum said it was almost fadier time anyway. I wonder if Allah was going to give me a award for waking them up for Fajir. Fajir, the dawn prayer. Zora, the noon, the noon prayer. Azur, the afternoon prayer. Madarib, the sunset prayer. Isha, the night prayer. Okay, so now we're on to chapter two. The reason I'd been having bad dreams, especially bad dreams about teachers, was because I was going to be starting a new school. This made me feel like there were snakes in my tummy. Ooh. Um, and some of them were sneaking up and squeezing my heart. I don't like things to change. It would be so much more convenient and better for everybody if things always just stayed the same. Take my pyjamas, for example. They are utterly comfortable pyjamas, which have somehow moulded their shape to my body and become my second skin. A weird second skin that I can take off and put on, like some kind of cool human lizard. My mother tried to throw them away and make me wear crispy pyjamas that don't even have dinosaurs on them. This is change. It's super annoying. One big, fat, huge change had already happened to me. We have to move house, which is the reason I had to start at a new store. All this happened because mum got her dream job. When she told me, I couldn't help wondering what she meant exactly by dream job. Did it mean that adults have super boring dreams all about jobs? If that was true, I wasn't looking forward to being an adult. Because at the moment I dream about fun stuff, like being on a roller coaster that turns into being a flying pig. <laughs> Sometimes they're even better than movies. Well, apart from the scary ones. That make me feel really lucky when I wake up and realise they're not real. So, anyway, the job that mum must have dreamt all about all the time was too far from where we lived before, so we had to move. The new moving bit was very, very times a hundred. Annoyed because Dad said I couldn't put all the 1,267 bits and bobs and toys from my room in the boxes to take to the new house. He didn't actually count my things, but he likes to say exact numbers when he's talking, so he can sound smart. He said I had to choose the ones I love most and give the rest to charity. When he didn't, why didn't he understand that I love them all? But then. He said he would be very proud of me if I could choose, because I'd have done better than Mum, who had already packed lots of what Dad called boxes of hoarded goods. I like Dad being proud of me, especially because it, it normally means pan au chocolat for breakfast. So I chose 56 bits and bobs to take, uh, to take with me. I counted them really carefully so I could be precise when Dad asked and also make sure that nobody sneakily threw anything away without me noticing. The good news was that the new house was super, super cool. When we first saw it, Mariam and I ran straight into the garden and whooped because it was at least twice the size of our old one. We planned out where we would put a football net and Ezra's climbing frame, and Mariam did lots of cartwheels to prove just how massive it was. Woohoo! Woo! Yay! That was the first time we saw the little old lady who lives next door. She peeped over the fence and said, Humph! And she put her nose higher in the air as if she was smelling something that she didn't like. Here we go. Hmm. So that was the introduction and chapters 1 and 2 of Planet Omar. Accidental Trouble Magnet.